So when people think of FPA, they immediately think there must be a bunch of analog components there. And obviously we mean this, we have analog and logic and routing all together. But we're often thinking about, oh, these are a few analog components to just kind of be glue logic, right? These are going to be things that are just sort of the analog things to get the signal to digital and we can work with it. But when I start talking about having an analog system that is configurable and programmable and has a huge number of analog components that can be used for computation, as well as what might be for, you know, a microprocessor and other infrastructure. This, the concepts start to change a bit. So this is the block diagram for the original SSC FPA structure. And we can see that we actually have a number of pieces. And there is a good question of how you partition what kind of computing and problems and things you want to do. Uh, this is, of course, also one of the development boards you would see for it. Now the question becomes, well, when I put this together, what kind of problems am I talking about? And here would be one example where I can imagine having, you know, again, straightforward computer connecting to a, an element on a USB, also having maybe an additional element, maybe like a scope, like a digital scope. But imagine I have this computation that is sitting here, basically starting from input through bandpass filter amplitude detect, you know, all the way to classifier. This is sort of end to end classification starting from signal all the way to us all the way to the output and you say well that could be interesting what kind of problem could I talk about this this is a because this is a real signal processing question and if, you know imagine I try to say I want to look for a word such as the word dark in this space <clears throat> well I could actually set up a, a range of filters which would be 12 in this case this particular example other you know, sort of smooth out the amplitude of the corner and smooth out the structure and then look at the result what I end up getting is I can actually set up a whole set of weights. I can even now at this stage um, train this. But even when this original data was done in 2015, we could actually still sort of find a solution that said here I can actually find an output, a single output that responds to the word dark and doesn't respond to anything else. This was running at about 23 microwatts of power to do this digitally. You know, almost any solution so far seen to date still takes over a factor of a thousand improvement in a lot of better IC processes. So there's a huge amount of opportunity uh, with these kinds of things. But what's most important is to understand that we are dealing with computing with the analog structures. The analog part is not just get it into digital, but with the analog being programmable along with the digital being programmable, it means I can now do real computing. Uh, in both cases and really be able to take advantage of all of those opportunities.